Well boys, welcome back to the channel and uh, today I have a very highly anticipated video to bring you guys. So boys, in today's video, I am going to be going over everything that we have done to this Kawasaki Brute Force behind me. Not just for you guys for that have Brute Forces, but for any four-wheeler that you want to turn into a mud-ready four-wheeler. I'm going to be going over everything that has been done to this because I believe this is the perfect perfectly built mud ready four-wheeler um, i'm not trying to be biased here but i absolutely love and think if i was going to build a mud ready four-wheeler myself this is everything i would have done so i'm going to bring you guys along show you guys all that we've done and hopefully this will help you guys if you guys are looking at building a mud ready four-wheeler Okay, so first I have to just say this is a 2013 Kawasaki Brute Force 750. It is not the EPS model, just the regular plain Jane Brute Force. And there is a absolute boatload of things that have been done to this. Not by me, but by the previous owner. So um, I actually did nothing to this except put new wheels on it. So this thing is literally... I've done nothing to it. It's exactly how I bought it. So I'm going to run through, tell you guys everything that the previous owner did to it. And maybe it'll help you guys if you guys are just looking around at what you should do to your four-wheeler. Um, I have a list of about 15 things of aftermarket parts that have been done to this. So I'm just going to get started so this video doesn't take all day. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is one of the most easily seen and noticed things is the snorkels. These are Warrior Riser snorkels. Absolutely amazing. Love them so far. I mean, I haven't been in water this deep. But now I know I can in case I, in case things get a little too deep. But um, yeah, absolutely love them. They work great. Um, they obviously have the spots for your um, like breather hoses, but mine are all run up right here to the handlebars. So those are just I cut them off because there was no need to keep them on there. Uh, next thing is the CFAB Rad Kit. Love CFAB, great brand. Uh, I love the build quality and how it looks. A lot of people have like the Wild Boar and other brands, but I think CFAB is a great brand. Um, I am gonna be telling you guys the brands of everything just so in case you guys are uh, looking at buying it, then you can know what I have. Not just because maybe you have to get the exact same thing as what I have, but just telling you if I either love it or hate it. So just kind of trying to give you guys as much information as possible. But uh, next we'll move on to the tire or wheel and tire setup. They are 28 inch uh, on the front. I think they're 28 by nines and in the rear they're 28 by 12s, I think. They might be 10s in the front, let me check here. Nope, 28 by nines in the front. So uh, yeah, love the tires. Fairly meaty, they're not like big assassinators or even really any mud tire. They're a crossover between trail and mud tire. Um, I would rather have some ITP mud lights because ITP mud lights to me are an amazing mud tire and uh, they wear very well, Don't they don't wear super fast or anything. But um, the tires that came on this were 28 inch ITP mud lights and uh, they were shot. Two of them didn't even hold air, so I had to get rid of those. Uh, they went down the road, somebody bought them. But um, I bought these, I had to get some, some sort of wheel set up because I had no tires for this. Um, so yeah, I went out, got an insane deal on these. I paid $150 for all four tires with rims. I had the rims sitting over there. But um, yeah, $150, they only have under 100 miles on them. So they're almost brand new. $150 for rims and tires that are almost brand new. It was a crazy deal. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm actually in the process of selling these rims because I don't need them. They're just like a stock rim. I have aftermarket rims on this that came with the four-wheeler. So it turned out perfect. Couldn't ask for it to be any better. But I am eventually going to switch to some more, a bigger lug, more of like a mud tire actually. So yeah, um, they are on ITP SS rims. Absolutely love them. I think they look sick. But um, yeah, that's the wheel and tire setup. Next, we'll move on to the headlights. So the next thing I've done to this is headlights. These are LED um, headlights that are in here. 
Uh, they, they're usually like the halogen, the yellow lights that I don't like at all. They really, they really don't look good to me. They don't belong on a four wheeler. So yeah, got LEDs in there. Looks amazing. One of them isn't quite working right. It's not shining bright and it's kind of a yellow color almost and it's supposed to be a white LED. I'll show you guys quick. We'll turn the key on. <sighs> Flipper, oh, they're already on. Yep, so this is the one that is being kind of funky. It looks yellow on the camera, but it is still white in person, but it's just, it's not shining very bright. This one over here is how they're supposed to look, a nice bright white LED headlight. And uh, yeah, we'll try to fix that one, but for now I'm just letting it be because it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Right here, we have these two buttons. Uh, one, I'll tell you in just a sec. This is the button I'm interested in. They do glow, it's kind of cool. I like, you can see if they're on or off. That's on, that's off. And uh, yeah, when it's on, it shows you the underglow here, guys. We have two in the front, one right there, as you can see, and then one on the other side. And in the rear, we just have one right there. So three lights in total, really illuminates it super well. I'll throw in a picture here. As you can see, it looks sick, especially when it's dark out. Absolutely love that. But um, next on the list is the winch. So on here, we've got the switch up here, it's right there. But on here we have a 2,500 pound worn winch. It is dirty right now, along with everything else on this floor because I just took it mudding. And uh, I pretty much just sprayed it off and threw it in the garage. It's not really cleaned. But anyways, yeah, 2,500 pound worn winch, hardly used, almost brand new. Works great, it's got synthetic cable, as you can see, or synthetic rope, I should say. And uh, love it, absolutely love it. And uh, just a little side note here, if you are looking at buying a winch, do upgrade to synthetic cable because it's literally a hundred and ten times better. Regular winch cable, it just it frays, it breaks easier. It's just it's a lot. It's not as durable as this synthetic cable. So definitely would recommend getting synthetic cable. Next on the list, which I'm guessing you've already seen, but the Bison front bumper. I'm trying to say all the brands so you guys have some idea of what brand it is. But yeah, this is a Bison front bumper. Absolutely massive, guys. I have seen bumpers that are big, and like Can-Am does a great job with their bumpers, but this thing is a monster. This is a huge bumper. It, I really love how it makes the brute force look, because to me, the, brute, the factory brute force front bumper looks pretty dopey. I don't really love the looks of it. I mean, I'd get over it, but it's not my favorite. With this bumper, 100 times better looks. It looks amazing, super, it looks mean from the front end. Absolutely love it, but yeah, it goes all the way from the sides here top all the way down so you are literally there's no chance that you are going to damage any of your front plastics it is a super great quality bumper absolutely would recommend buying one for your brute force i don't know if they sell them for other four wheelers i'm guessing they would but i just know they sell them for brute forces anyways next on the list we have to walk around over here but um yeah right here over by the shifter which is it's stock nothing down to the shifter here but we have the glow shift temp gauge. Absolutely a must have, guys. I I never realized how much you could use this. Like I saw it, I was like, oh sick, it's got a temp gauge. That's cool. I've never had a four wheeler. Like, the Grizzly doesn't have a four wheeler, the Honda's sitting outside. Oh, duh. Sorry, said that wrong. Never had a four wheeler that has a temp gauge. Neither of these two do, but it is a game changer, guys. Especially when you have the, f oh, probably should show you guys that quick. This other button here is uh, the fan turn on. That's how you can turn on your fan. So it's not just through the thermostat or anything. It's just a manual turn on, which I like. I'm not gonna go into depth on that, but it's a nice touch tap. Anyways, on the temp gauge, it is amazing because you can just see how hot your bike is when it's running uh, 150 miles an hour through the mud, when you're just tearing up the trails, whatever it is, the bikes can get hot. You can definitely feel it on your leg, but that's normal for a big V-twin engine like this. Um, they just get hot, but sometimes they'll get hotter than normal. And you can definitely tell. So it's nice to have this temp gauge to tell you exactly what your temperature is. This thing usually runs around 140, I believe. I can't exactly remember, but I think it runs around 140. But the thing is, I always run the fan. A lot of people say you shouldn't. A lot of people say you should. I just do it. Uh, the fan might, or the, like the blade, the fan itself might get worn out, but I'm okay with replacing that. It's, I'd rather just have it running all the time and keep the engine a little cooler. And uh, yeah, it's also nice for your leg because this side blasts out heat and your left leg is literally on fire by the time you get back. So it keeps the bike a little cooler. But yeah, temp gauge is amazing. Absolutely love it. 
Okay, next on the list is the handlebars, which you can clearly tell are not factory. Uh, they have these really cool blue tips on the end. Love them, looks sick. It doesn't match anything, but I think it looks cool. Uh, really nice grips, they're super grippy. The other ones actually kind of broke on the end, so kind of sucks. But yeah, everything is installed on these handlebars, even though they're not factory. They are rocks racing handlebars. Love them, they work great. Honestly, if I was the one building this bike, I would not have done it just because it seems like time consuming process for not that big of a change. Like I feel like the stock handlebars are fine, but eh, it's nice to have upgraded ones, I guess. And uh, yeah, the Speedo and everything is relocated down here because they're not stock handlebars. Next on the list is the uh, four wheel drive actuator because these come with a regular, like all four wheelers, the standard uh, shifter is a electronic shift right here. You can see it's got four wheel drive, two wheel drive, and it would just be a little button here, but they are so known to break, especially when you get water in them. All the, the less buttons you have to have on here, the better, because for mudding, when water gets in there, which it definitely will, they, it, just, it just causes problems. So this is a manual four wheel drive shift engagement lever. So you pull this down and push this down and then it puts you in four wheel drive. It's just manual through the cable, no electronics involved, super nice, super easy, and a lot less chance of braking. So yeah, absolutely love that. Okay, while we're over here on the side of the bike, let's talk about what we have in the clutches. Now they are stock clutches, but not stock clutching. So the weights and everything are changed in this. Um, it has, um, it is clutched for 28 inch tires, which is what we're running right now. I do want to run 28 inch mud tires eventually, but it does fine with these. So yeah, 28 inch, uh, clutch kit in there. Not sure the brand, the guy actually never told me when I bought it from him, but, uh, yeah, it's in there. Next is, uh, the exhaust, which you can probably tell is not stock. Anyways, on this bike here, I am running a single exit muzzy exhaust sounds amazing guys i love the sound it just barks super low sound which i love so speaking of the exhaust we'll give you guys a little start up here in the garage if you've watched some of my other videos of the brute force you will have heard it before um i have a few other videos you guys can go check them out on my channel but i'll give you guys a little startup just so you can hear what the muzzy exhaust sounds like if you're looking at getting an exhaust so we'll walk over here Ugh, throw my seat back on quick Okay, I got the seat on. Now we'll just fire up quick. Oh, those headlights look nice. Turn that on. And then I will just hit the button. As you can see, it's pretty loud. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty loud exhaust. Um, love it. Perfect, like perfect level of sound for me. It's not too loud that you're waking up everybody in the neighborhood, but it's just loud enough that it gives you that kind of fun adrenaline feeling when you're going fast or whatever you're doing. But to go with the exhaust, if I pull off the seat cover here, or the seat, we can see, try to do this one handed. Okay, you can see, sorry, it's a mess. I have not really washed this thing, like I said, but ignore the mess. We have a muzzy tuner down here. Uh, it's got eight different modes on it. Uh, I read you're supposed to keep it on one, so that's what it stays on. I think you have to do, I don't know, there's some tinkering involved in it. I haven't looked into it yet, but uh, yeah, we've got a tuner for it. It definitely does give it more power. Uh, I love it. It sounds great. gives a little more power. And uh, yeah, speaking about power though, guys, this thing has more power than you will ever need. I know some people might be like, well, no, it does. Can-Ams, like the 850s, the 1000s, they have a lot of power, they truly do, and they are the most powerful four-wheelers really ever sold. But this thing, for a 750, puts out so much power. Like, it's literally not comparable to that Grizzly. I mean, it is a different engine, twin to a single, but still, it is so powerful. I've had so many people hop on it and ride it, and they say it's literally scary how much power it has. And um, it's true, I mean, it's a very powerful four-wheeler. It can pop up wheelies like the best of them. And uh, yeah, it's super fun to ride. Okay, the last thing that I have on my list that we have done to this is a lift. I know some of you guys um, don't like lifts, some of you guys love lifts. This thing just got a basic uh, two inch high lifter lift kit in here. You can't really see it, it's right there. Uh, definitely does make a difference. Like, you can definitely tell it's got a lot more ground clearance. But uh, yeah, that's all we have done to this. 
Um, I'm gonna tell you, so stock from factory, brute force is put out around 51 horsepower. With the engine modifications we have done to this, this thing sits around 65 is what I've figured out. So um, lots of power, super fun to ride. And uh, this isn't really a promotion for brute forces because this is really something you can do to any four wheeler. Like I've just done it to the brute force. You could do this to Outlanders, Renegades, literally any four wheeler. You could do it to a Grizzly, you could do it to a Honda. I mean, okay, maybe not a Honda, but Grizzlies, <laughs> Can-Ams, whatever it is. I'm just doing it on the four wheeler that it's all done on for me. And uh, yeah, I love brute forces. If you were looking at one, I would definitely recommend a brute force. But I would also recommend Can-Ams because I've seen those things in action and they are insane. But um, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys might have learned something. And maybe this will help you figure out what you want to do to your four-wheeler. Because maybe it's stock, just like this Grizzly. And you want to hype it up a little bit. Get in some deeper mud. Do some more fun stuff. Whatever it is. I just hope this video was informative and helpful to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm not trying to make this too long or boring. So I'm going to sign it off now. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys next time.